Hi, welcome back to Musician's Edition Practice with me. We're still working in the Rubank Elementary Method for Flute, and today we're on the second half of Lesson 25. I broke them up last time just because they were a little too different for me to want to do them all in one lesson. So today we're, lo we're looking at just the trill studies. Now, what is a trill? A trill is, well, in the book it's written TR, and that's what you'll usually see in your music too, is TR above the notes. So what you're gonna do is you're going to just take it a note higher, so that first one's marked F, right? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go F to G really fast. That is a trill, and it can be on any note. F's not the only one, so it's always gonna go to the note above. Okay, so first we're gonna do F to G. So take a moment to just do the trill on the F. Great, and then in our exercise, the next thing we have is E natural, so it's going to go E natural to F. So you're gonna just do your middle finger and you're just going to raise that up. So take a moment to play your E natural trill. Great, now that's all we're going to need to know for this exercise right now. All right, so let's give exercise number three a try. So the way it works is, you know, it's marked TR on that top part. And then when we come to the second line here, that is still technically the trill. Okay, so it's just, that's why they mark it as a trill versus writing it like that, but I guess they want you to get used to seeing it written both ways. Okay, so let's just give this a try, shall we? All right, ready? Oh, wait, before we play, let's take a look at our key signature. What key signature are we in? F, which only has the one flat, B flat. Great. Okay, and then our time signature is... Common time, which is four, four. All right, now let's play. Okay, we're ready? One, two, three, four. Excellent, how did you do? It kind of takes a little bit of thinking power to be counting out the twos, you know, two beats for And then when it's written out, it's a little bit more complicated, isn't it? So that's why they write the TRN so much easier to read. All right, let's do it again. Let's take it a little bit faster. And trills, trills can go on any form of note. They don't have to be half notes. Sometimes they're on quarter notes even too. So anytime there's TR, that's just what it means. Okay, so let's do, let's try 90 beats per minute, okay? Here we go. Two, three, four. Great, how'd you do at that speed? 
Excellent job. All right, let's take it a little bit faster still. So let's do it at 100 this time. 100. All right, ready? Here we go. Two, three, four. Great job, how did you do with that speed? Excellent, just keep on practicing it. And like I said, most times they're written like the TR instead of that. Oh, and another thing about trills, we don't tongue them, they're just slurred. Please don't do this. Like that's, that's too much, no, no, no. Trills are always slurred. All right, let's take a look at our exercise number four. So we're still doing F to G. Still doing E natural to F. And then we have G to A. And then F to G again. E natural to F. And then G to A again. All right, and the way I was taught for this one was just your ring finger. That, that's all you're doing. But just make sure you keep the finger close to the key. You don't want it to be going like this, all loosey-goosey high in the air, just, just real quick, low to the flute. All right, let's do this one at the slower pace again. So let's go back to 80, I felt was a good tempo for this. Here we go, hold on, 80. My metronome is so sensitive when I'm changing it. All right, so we're still in the same key signature, still in 4-4. Four, four. We just have a different exercise, but going from G to A is the only thing that we're working on that's different. All right, ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four. Great, how did you do? It's a little challenging, at least to me, for those E naturals to Fs and then it ends on an F. It's a little challenging. I mean, nothing too unreasonable though, but just enough to make you kind of think about it. All right, let's do it again. Let's take it a little bit faster. Let's go for 90. All right, ready? One, two, three, four. Excellent, how'd you do this time? Perfect, let's do it again. Once again, a little faster. Let's take it at our 100. 100, all right, and here we go. One, two, three, four. All right, how'd you do this time? After trilling for a while, I wanted to keep trilling on that last half note at the end. Did you do the same? Just gotta pay attention, not a big deal. All right, so now looking onto our exercise number five. All right, so now looking from high C to D, now this one is not the same fingering, okay? So normally on C, you know we have thumb off, index, and pinky, right? And then normally our high D is, you know, more fingers down. We've got thumb, middle, and ring, and still pinky. But that would be a lot for a trill. So for C to D trill, we're gonna use 
these keys here. I know we haven't used them at all yet. These are trill keys. So this one here particularly is the one we're going to do. So we're gonna do C, and then we're gonna just hit that little key with our ring finger. Take a moment to just try that real quick before we get into our exercise. Okay, so now that we know C, let's, we got C, and then the next thing we have is B to C, and that one is, yes, a standard. So you're gonna take your thumb off and your index finger off at the same time. So try that real quick. Great, then our next one is A to B, which is the one we did in our previ previous exercises. And then we're going to do G to A, which we did, F to G, E to F, D to E. Now this one's a little different because normally, you know, we have the pinky on, right? So it's usually like switching like this. So for D to E, we're gonna just leave the pinky off for both. It's gonna just be just the ring finger. So go ahead and try that real quick. Great, okay, and then after D, we have C. And for this one, it's now, because it's the mid register, it's going to be the other trill key, the one going coordinating to our index. So go ahead and try that one real quick. Excellent job. All right, and then that covers the ones we need to know for exercise five. So this is going to take a little bit of thinking. So let's go back to our metronome here. And let's actually take this one slower since there are different trill keys. All right, so let's try this. Let's, let's see what 70 feels like. All right, all right. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Great, how did you do? That one really did take a little bit more thinking power since some of the trills had totally different keys we've never touched before. All right, but if you were struggling with that one or if that was even a little too hard, you know, take some time to practice it on your own. Slow your metronome down, even just, you know, do one note at a time if need be. And then you're like, okay, D is also new. You know, just do what you can, slow it down, bring yourself to pace. But if you felt good about that and want to try it even faster, why don't we go ahead and do so? All right, so let's do, let's do 80. All right, ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Excellent job, how'd you do that time? 
Man, it really, really does take thinking power. Make sure you take time to practice these. We do see trills here and there. It's not like super common. It's also not rare either. So it's actually in a lot of our sheet music. So anyway, you just wanna make sure you get comfortable with them. We do see them. All right, let's take this even faster. Let's do it at, let's meet halfway from what we've been doing to, since we started slower, you know. Let's do it at 95 this time. All right, ready? Here we go. One, two, three, four. Great job, how'd you do? I messed up a little bit on that uh, top line. I do get thrown off a little bit with the, uh, for some reason, the rest. I wanna just keep playing the trill a little longer and then keep on playing. Either way, I messed up just a little bit right there. All right, let's take a look at our last exercise of the day, number six. See, now this is where the trills are on the quarter note, so you're only going to trill on that one quarter note. Like it's so much shorter. That's all it is, just trill only for the quarter note. All right, so let's take this real slow since now we're not trilling as long. So let's go back to 70. All right, so how about we do this? Because I find this helpful if I'm struggling with the trills is to hear and feel the piece without the trills first. So let's actually play this piece without the trills first. We're just gonna do real simple playthrough, no trills. Okay, ready? And we're in the key of C, no sharps, no flats, still 4-4. Four, four. All right, ready? One, two, three, four. Great job. Okay, so now we know the feel for the song. So now we should be able to throw our trills in. Let's still do this with the metronome though. So let's do it at 70 beats per minute. All right, ready? One, two, three. Great job, how'd you do? It's a little different with the quarter notes, but nothing too unreasonable. All right, if you need to practice that at that pace, please continue to do so until you feel comfortable, strong and confident about it. But if you're ready to take it a little faster, let's try it faster. Let's take it to 80, 80, 80. There we go. <laughs> All right, ready, here we go. One, two, three, four. Great job, how'd you do at that pace? Excellent job. All right, let's take it a little faster. Let's do what we did like last time, meet partial way. Let's do this at 95. 95, there we go. All right, ready? Flutes up. One, two, three, four. How'd you do at that pace? 
Great job. All right, make sure you practice these trills because we're going to see them often or in our sheet music and we want to know what they are and how to confidently play them. All right, thanks for joining me and until next time.